All right, another edition of Riding Home. We're almost in Indianapolis for the conclusion of Georgia's season. Um, one thing we want to do right now, though, is talk about how we got here. And I don't mean these eight hours of snow that we've just driven through. Um, this has been a long year, Matt. And it, it started with the game in Charlotte, which was, it's fine, man. If it falls, it falls. Um, the game in Charlotte, which was really highly anticipated, perhaps the most highly anticipated season opener for Georgia since 1982. Yeah, against the Tigers, who I I think you know some people that are you know close to the, the Clemson program and fans there. I don't think they had a lot of optimism going into that game. I think Georgia folks thought that Georgia was the better team. They clearly were. Uh, but going out of that game, we saw how good the defense was, went five, six sacks against Clemson. But that was the JT Daniels game. We didn't realize until after the fact that he was injured. They only went 10 to three with the, the pick six from Chris Smith. And then after that, the season really got rumbling. We have a quarterback you know, scenario, competition up in the air. We thought we were gonna see Carson Beck start the UAB game. It turned out to be Stetson Bennett. He throws for five touchdowns. JT Daniels comes back for South Carolina. Looks great. Something happens again. We see more Stetson Bennett, and that's you know kind of how the season's gone. He's really been the quarterback ever since. So lots of quarterback drama. But at the end of the day, this defense has been the one we've been talking about nonstop all year, and it started with that Clemson game, Ryan. It's been a hell of a year, and what a the anticipation for months leading into this season was was really really great. Um, I never really understood why Clemson was favored in that game. I, from the jump, from the jump, I thought Georgia was a better team all summer, all off season. I didn't understand. I mean, I turned out to be right about that as well as a lot of people did. But that was the game where we were like, "Whoa, this is going to be a really, really good defense." As we were passing by uh, Louisville's golf course right now, yeah. um, we, you know, that that day when they have six or seven sacks on on DJU, it was just ridiculous. couldn't do anything. It was a nightmare for for them, and they clearly didn't know how to handle themselves without Travis Etienne and Trevor Lawrence. So, you know that. You know, that was a fun day. I think I still got my mayonnaise on my desk. My, my Duke's mayo mayonnaise. Um, but, it set the tone for yeah, the year, generally speaking, that this was a Georgia team that was going to be hard to deal with. Um, and we knew going into that, if you get past Clemson, you kind of have an easy stretch until Florida. And obviously, we thought Florida was going to be a lot better than they were. We thought it would be an yeah. easy stretch. And as it turns out, all of a sudden, Arkansas was good. All of a sudden, Kentucky was good. It's hard to remember now, perhaps. I mean, Kentucky ended the season 10-3. and Clemson ended the season 10-3. and People say, well, who is Georgia? Who's Georgia played, Paul? Um, <laughs> they played multiple top 10 teams I early mean, in the season. Beat them. They had College Game Day in Athens twice. They had yeah. them in Charlotte for the Clemson game. They played in big games, but looking back on it, now it's, you know, Arkansas is still a pretty darn good football team. I think they were and Kentucky not is four. respectable. I mean, very respectable. Well, so Kentucky, okay, so you get up to Nashville, and that, that that's probably still the best quarter of football that Georgia's played um, offensively, for sure. I think they got up 35 nothing. It was it was insanity. But um, you, they just they kind of uh, JT looked the, the best he's looked his entire career at Georgia. Um, they just were lights out. And I know they played Vanderbilt, who was not good, but it wasn't just that. I mean, they, everything was clicking. That's what national championship teams are supposed to look like. That is what they're like supposed to look yeah. like. And a week later, here comes game day. And an Arkansas team that was undefeated. You're talking with, with Holly Rowe, and she says... She said that JT was a game-time decision. She said that was before Arkansas, correct? Yeah. And yeah, and, you know, we, you know, at that point, we thought that JT Daniels was probably going to get right back into the mix and back to status quo, and all of a sudden, he's not, he's not really cleared for the game. There was a lot of misunderstanding about his health for a few weeks there. We weren't yeah. sure when he was going to come back. It, it all became a speculation, and Stetson Bennett was running the show. This became the, the Stetson Bennett year, really. He's been the Georgia starting quarterback. There are two games he didn't start. Right. Clemson and uh, oh, I think it's South Carolina. Two. South Vanderbilt Carolina. as well. Uh, Vanderbilt, so three. Yeah. So three. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, he came in from the jump against UAB and lit it up, man. Yeah. He had 88% completion percentage, five touchdowns. 
most of that being in the first half. I mean, it was, it was just a crazy day. That's the day we realized Brock Bowers was going to be a monster. I mean, it was. Well, I want to go back to the Arkansas game because that that really set the tone for the remainder of the year. You got to remember. Well, they, they shut out a top 10 team. Yeah, and, and that was about as live as I can remember Sanford for a noon game. It was, it was, the, the team was ready to play for sure. Arkansas just got jumped. They understandably didn't know what had happened to them. Yeah, they got punched in the face over and over by Georgia. Going into the Michigan game, and I guess you could throw Vanderbilt in there too, but the, the Arkansas game was the most complete team yeah. we've seen from start to finish. They dominated Arkansas. Of course, they dominated Vanderbilt again. They beat Auburn pretty bad. They too. beat Auburn pretty good. Who, I think, Auburn's not so they, terrible. They, they but they're they not good. In my eyes, blowout was uh, Clemson. I mean, the rest of the wins were dominant. South Carolina covered in the game, but it didn't feel like it. it felt like Georgia like took some. more than care of yeah, them. Yeah, they, they, they did. Some. And they, then Tennessee gave them a fight for one quarter. I mean, quarter and a half, maybe. And then Georgia took over from there. But they, they, they're not a team that's faced a ton of adversity. I mean, they did obviously in the SEC title game and first drive against Auburn. And the question I mean, to me is, what is adversity? Is it? Um, I if, mean, I, if you I, only have it in the first quarter, did you really fight through it? Well, what I mean to say is, if you, if you think if you think a particular thing is going one way with your quarterback, and it turns out to be something else, is that adversity? I, I think mean, they've had injury adversity. They've had, definitely they had, had injury one issues. weapon that yeah. is an NFL caliber receiver has barely played only until the end of the season. Again, if you if, carousel, if you're coming into this, so if I were to tell you. In the summer, okay, Georgia's going to play in the national championship game, and their starting quarterback will be Stetson. Eric Gilbert's not playing, and George Pickens has only played two or three games. Kyrus Jackson missed about six games. Darnell was out for a while. Would you really believe me in the answer? No. Nope. First of all, people wouldn't believe you because of Stetson, I would say, more than anything. But it's been – it's been a – I mean, with Alabama, you know you got to stop, stop Bryce Young if you can. And then probably stop Robinson. But with with Georgia, the question is, who do you really have to stop? And that that's the hard part because this team is very diverse in the way that it can attack you. Well, offensively, there's just so many weapons. You've got multiple running backs who can help you in the passing game. Yeah. And they're running the ball well. I, I think you'd have to stop the offensive line first and dominate them That's, that, before you can figure out how to stop the entire rushing game, then Stetson Bennett, then the receivers, then the tight ends. I mean, I guess Brock Bowers is the one guy the defense as a whole has to focus on and say, hey, where is he lined up? We need probably some help um, if it's in one-on-one. Uh, maybe get a safety, you know, kind of figuring out where he is too, but he's a guy you can't leave in one, you know, one-on-one positions. And they're going to get him the ball, you know, and screen passes down the field. He can hurt defenses in multiple ways, but maybe this is a game where they try to feed George Pickens the ball a little more too to open it up I for guys that. like Jermaine and Lad McConkey and Brock Bowers and, and, and others. I, I can get, totally see them play a quick game, get the ball out to the perimeter. Yeah. I, I could totally. A really good job with that. Todd Monkey called a great yeah. game against Michigan. He's calling plays to their strength, which is what you should be doing. And uh, he's making it very comfortable for Stetson. I mean, he's been coaching for two years now. They know Stetson and what he can do more than anyone. That's the reason, you know, they chose him. They know his skill set. And uh, they really, he called an excellent game for Stetson uh, against Michigan. And I expect some very similar type of, you know, schemes on offense for this game. I do think the Charleston Southern game is going to be a game people you know, don't remember much about and that's fine. That was but one of the most fun games all it was, year I had. It was outstanding. It was awesome. I yeah, mean, the, go the ahead. Jordan Davis stuff. Yeah. You know, I was all over that too. I was right there pretty much the entire time. The Jordan Davis stuff was just spectacular. Him becoming an honorary member of the marching company. That day was legendary. That was a, a historic day in Georgia football history, in my opinion. I thought it was really important. You got your, your super highly advertised by the media and the fans. 340-pound player on defense getting a touchdown, right. a rushing touchdown. You've got him conducting the band after the game. It was a blowout. It didn't matter how the offense really played because it wasn't their best game by far. No, it and wasn't. And you still win 56-7 to or something like that. It was That was a special day. He's an example. Something that we haven't really talked much about is there's a lot of Georgia football players who are going to play their last game in red and black on Monday night. Yeah. Davis being one of them. 
This is our last chance to watch them in those colors. I mean, there's a lot of really important players from the last three or four years who won't, who will uh, not be lining up for them next year. Jordan Davis, Nicole Nicole. Dean is probably out. You got James Cook and Zamir White, I would think, are gone. Oh, yeah. Quay uh, Walker's gone. Jamari Salyer will be gone. A lot of guys that are really important. And, and we don't... <clears throat> The focus will be on the fact that this is a national championship game and really what better last game to play in in your career. But their legacies are on the line. Kirby's, Kirby's legacy is on the line too. Um, a lot can change um, Monday night in Indianapolis. I, I'm going to rant real fast. We should never play this game up this far north again. I mean, I really didn't care, but this is ridiculous. And it's 20, it's not even 20 degrees. Uh, it's, 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 it's not, no, no. The best but, restaurant is called Elmo's. There's just a lot, well, a little in particular, something about Indy that's a little, a little odd. But I just, I, 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 back to Ryan's point, that every, every, I remember David Green and David Pock leaving the field for the last time at Georgia in Tampa, the Outback Bowl, TB had saved them with some good runs. Uh, obviously, David did what he had to do in that game against Wisconsin. And it, it is hard to wrap your head around the fact that these guys will never play again. And it, it also seems sometimes that <clears throat> Georgia will never be, <clears throat> excuse me, Georgia will never be as good as they are right now again. And obviously, that's not true. But it felt like that in, in, uh, on New Year's Day in 05 when David and David left. And it may well feel like that with this group. But I'm here to tell you that between Georgia, Bama, and Ohio State, there, there's no slowing down with that trio. They've got what they need to move forward. This season, they had a competitive game. And, you know, it just – they had one competitive game. I think you had that same feeling after 2017, too, with yeah. Nick and Sony leaving and Lorenzo and Roquan and Dav and all those guys left. And But the way they recruit um, – they're bringing studs there will in be again. New There's Roquans. going to be new Nicobe Deans, and it could be Jamon Dumas Johnson next year. Yeah. I don't know if he's on the same level as Roquan and Nicobe Dean, but he's you know definitely a Monty Rice, you know probably better. He's a guy. Yeah, I take Monty Rice, man. man. I love Monty Rice. They've got more guys who come after the passer. They've got elite defensive backs coming in. So Kirby's going to keep the defensive machine rolling, um, and they'll be. A, this is not the last time he's going to have this team playing for a national championship, but. You're here again against the same, you know, Alabama team. It's not going to get change. it done. It's, gonna, it's yeah. not going to change. If it wasn't them, it, it'd be Ohio State or somebody else. You, you're at the point where whoever you play at these games, they're really good. You're really good, and you just got to execute. The question is, will they execute better than they did in Atlanta? I, I'm I, again. I keep saying I'm dumb enough to, <clears throat> to think they will. Um, but I do think Todd Munkin has to call a good game plan. And I think Kirby and uh, Dan Lanning have to adjust what they were doing. What they were doing didn't work. It's all good. It might, this could be a third down type of game, too. If Georgia goes three and out multiple times and the yeah, defense has to come back on the field, that can't happen. You don't have to score every time. It, uh, you obviously want to score as many possessions as you can. But even a few first downs, play the field position game is really going to help out the defense a lot. You just can't go three and out, especially multiple times, and keep giving the ball back to them. Because you're only going to stop them so many times. Well, if they play the way they did in Atlanta, yeah. which which I'm assuming they will, uh, I, I don't I don't I don't I don't know. Um, this is going to be a different game. This is going to be a different game. Georgia better be ready to stop the run again because um, Robbins is completely healthy. And they've got he, it. He played a monster game against Cincinnati. They, yeah. they need to clog the holes. He's a good back. He's a good back. He is. What's the uh, one thing you'll remember from your your expeditions here uh, this year with Dog Post? I mean, you. Where did we go to? Charlotte, Jacksonville. Where have we been? Fort Charlotte, Lauderdale, Jacksonville, Fort yeah. Lauderdale, uh, Auburn, Eastern Kentucky, Auburn, Knoxville. Your favorite place that we went. Yeah. It wasn't Charlotte. It definitely wasn't Charlotte. Uh, no, they were not ready for that game. Matt? Jacksonville wasn't terrible. I liked the, the dinner place we ate in Knoxville afterwards. That was kind of nice. Oh, Calhoun's. Calhoun's was nice. It's okay. I thought um, the brisket was a little bit 
was, it was 10 o'clock at night, man. I mean, Briscoe's not going to be good at 10 o'clock at night. Uh, the five-star weather in Fort Lauderdale was, was I memorable. had fun in Fort Lauderdale, man. It was a good week, and we got to watch a dominating win at the end of it. You know, we were treated pretty well. I, I had a lot of fun. That was, that was a long excursion. We was there for a while. Hopefully, this is our favorite weekend, but we'll see how that goes. What about you, Dan? It's not starting off great. It's um, been... It's been Travel wise, so far. Well, y'all didn't go to Nashville. I, I like flying in and out of Nashville. First of all, Nashville, wet, nice town, vastly overrated. I mean, it's, it's Birmingham on steroids, okay? But it, it's, a, it's a neat town if you can fly in and out. You know, I, I, I like that. Um, I thought I just was able to go to that game, do everything, and I could watch Arkansas and AM. I, I watched. Georgia State and Auburn and, and kind of couldn't believe what I was watching. Um, that was a fun trip. That was without y'all, so that probably made it a little bit better. Um, you know, in Jacksonville, we got to watch you got got to watch the Braves. Yeah, uh, that, that was, was awesome. Yeah, that was probably the most fun. Just as like a that was awesome. period, we watched them win what game five, game four. Let's see, I think it was. Uh, they they was, won Saturday night. That was game four. It was game they, four. That was game four. They went up three one. Uh, the night before, they went up three one. The night before they beat Florida, and then the night that Georgia beat Florida, they lost. To, to Is that right? Did they yeah. lose that night? I think that's when. I, I might be a little off. I think they won that game to go up three one. They yeah. lost the next one, then won the, Sunday, Sunday, they yeah. won the whole thing. Won the whole thing. At that point, we were back. <laughs> but I was watching Dansby tie it up, and then Solaire take no, the lead there. They won the, the night awesome. of Georgia Florida. Yeah, they won the night. It was the come from behind. Well, maybe they won both nights. Then. I think they did because they went up 3-1. Yeah, it was one all and they something like that. It was, but, it was really hype regardless of what happened. I remember that being it was. Hype. Hype was the term. But next year is the big time travel year. Going to Starkville, going to both Columbias, going to Lexington. Um, I, could, I could do without Middle Earth myself, but you know, it's what it is. And, and at some stage here, this league will change. We'll, we'll welcome in. Uh, Texas and OU and you know it'll just be a different league we don't know what that will look like in the future we were talking about Clemson earlier both Clemson and Oklahoma are going through some real changes that Georgia's not going to have to deal with I mean Clemson obviously losing uh, a long time coordinator to Oklahoma Oklahoma losing their head coach who's had a lot of success there I think it's Tony Elliott at Virginia now it, he yeah. is, yeah. yeah. So. And you got Venables over there. Yeah. And, and, but Venables is going to have to deal with the SEC, something he's never dealt with. And, and that's going to be a real challenge for Oklahoma and Texas. And, you know, how will these? How will the divisions look? Will there be divisions? You know, I think you're going to see LSU on the, the, the come up again under Brian Kelly when they come in. Who knows if Brian Harson is doing well at Auburn at that it's point. It's not looking like that's going to go. Um, it's not looking like this guy knows how to drive either. We're making a lot of progress here, but um, I, I, it's been a fun season to yeah, cover. Training, kind of ready for it to end. As crazy as that sounds, we get and to you cover were, the dogs. You were talking about a lot of the riding homes that we did in the summer of 2020 were all about COVID. Are we going to have a season? Are we going to have a season? You know, and again, and I'm no scientist, so it was really tough for me to right? explain what the not virus was going to do. Not I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor just yet. Um, but yeah. I, I didn't have yeah. all the specifics. I didn't have all the facts. It was tough to try to you know, produce content in an era where we didn't know if we were going to have a college football season. There, you know, there a was a months. tremendous amount of unknown uh, going into 2020 and, and, and has been some in 2021. I'll give the college football playoff some credit in that they – they only limited so much as it relates to the, the, the Orange Bowl and the championship game, which I'm glad. Um, I understand why they're not doing media in person. It'd be, it, the communication could have been quicker, I think. But um, I get it. But, you know, God knows I hope we're done with this thing by next year. And I had a Georgia official tell me the other day, that if you had told them two years ago, they'd still be dealing with COVID, they wouldn't believe you. So, we'll just see, but 
I expect them. Well, it's not COVID that's the issue. It's weather getting up here. Yeah, the weather that's was more of an issue. issue than anything so far. And I, I wonder, you know, how many folks are going to get sidetracked with this weather? Because Nashville was a train wreck, man. Yeah. yeah. It's just weird because the weather was so great seven days ago. Yeah, in Fort Lauderdale. Right. It's completely um, windy. It's yeah. completely windy. Went from 80 degrees and sunny to 12 degrees and a freaking snowstorm. I've never. I've never been to Louisville. This is new for me. Well, I hope you had fun because we're we're, yeah. we're, we're past right it there. now. Yeah. <laughs> but it it's been an outstanding season, and we'll see what happens. Uh, Georgia's still favored by about three in this game. Kind of can't go a lot below three or a lot higher than three, um, and. That's amazing that Alabama's an underdog in any game, yeah. but they are in this one, too. Final thought? I think we're going to have a, a real battle. I think it's going to come down to the last one or two possessions. I don't see it being like it was in the ICC title game where one team kind of breaks away in the third quarter and kind of takes over. Yeah. I think it's going to be a four-quarter battle. Uh, whoever makes the most plays at the end uh, is going to win the game. Kirby's got to outcoach Nick Saban at some point in this game, too. Um, I think he's just got to draw even with him. I yeah. mean, if you just draw even, you've got better talent, I think. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. You not have a, a quarterback. better roster. If you not, a, not, a, with not a quarterback, but man, damn, man, where is Alabama better than Georgia? Receivers? Someone was asking me that the other day, going down the position list. and Quarterback receivers, probably pass rushers in The in secondary general. is pretty even. I mean, I might take Georgia. The, the big guys, Georgia is better. Yeah. And and they the, that's, that's the challenge for Georgia or should be the challenge to the, d the defense. You know, these guys whipped you the last time, and are you going to let them whip you again? That's the question. Brian Roberts is probably the best back in the game, but I would take Georgia's three the whole, backs, yeah. their whole unit over Alabama's. Uh, I would take their wide receivers if Matthew was healthy. Right now, I'm really not sure. Tight ends, Georgia. Offensive line could probably be even. Al. Yeah, um, of the two. Of the two, yeah. But tight ends, Georgia, for sure. I'd say linebackers, Georgia. Specialists, I'm not as certain. But it's it's it's, it's a relatively even game. But, you know, Georgia needs to break through. That's, you know, break on through to the other side, Jim Morrison, doors, all that stuff. It's time to do it. And uh, we'll be there to give you the coverage. Matt's going to punch the button. I think we're in Indiana. Indiana? No, no, we did. We are in Indiana. Okay, good. And uh, we'll see you uh, as we keep going here.